This is a video um, that is about the Latin tense structure that's going to build up towards a sequence of tenses. Um, as you know, um, and again this is true for not just for Latin but any language, as you know, and we're going to draw a timeline to help you visualize this, as you know, there are really only three times possible. Now, later, and earlier. So we've got a timeline. You can see right in the middle is now, and then later at some point, and then things that happened before. In grammar talk, we very conveniently call these um, present, and bear with me while I learn how to use this, the present, the future, and the past. Okay. And this is a very simplified view. Um, now, Latin has this notion, and in grammar talk we call it aspect, but you don't need to worry about it. We'll just tell you what the names of these various aspects are. And one is for incomplete action, which very conveniently is called imperfect. Imperfect. Uh, and it's for incomplete action. So, um, let's write in a fabulous shade of red. Not. Not done. And of course there's going to be another timeline down here for action that is done. And we'll shift back to black so you can see that. And we'll draw another timeline. And we'll put the same three hash marks on it for the past, the present, and the future. Draw a nicer arrow on there. There we go. Um, and these timelines, and this is the perfect timeline. The perfect timeline. Now for those of you who have studied Latin for a little bit, you should notice that um, some of these correspond to actual tense names, like here we have the present tense, the future tense, imperfect tense, perfect tense, and they're going to team up to form the tenses that you know. Um, so present and imperfect match up to form the present tense. Yeah. The present tense and the future and the imperfect line up to form the future tense, and the past and the imperfect line up to form the imperfect tense. And these are all actions going on in the present that are not done, the future that are not done, and the past that are not done. But what about for action that's done? Well, if in the present it is done, we call it perfect. And if it's complete in the future, we call it future perfect, and if it's complete in the past, we call it Pluperfect. Okay, now there are some interesting relationships between these. You'll notice that each tense pairs up with an imperfect and a perfect. So imperfect and pluperfect go together. And for those of you who are working on sequence of tenses, you should recognize that those two both go with the historical sequence. and the present imperfect go together. The, and you should notice that those both go with the primary sequence and sequence of tenses. Primary sequence, secondary sequence, yuck! Well, let's do this again, um, because tenses line up another way. And incidentally, there's a third lineup in lovely purple of future and future perfect, and those will go together to form the future more vivid for those of you studying um, conditions. So if future perfect, then perfect. So once this once this condition gets completed in the future, then the second one can happen. But more to the issue at hand is sequence of tenses. So this green goes with the Oh, primary. 
And the blue goes with the historical. Okay. Now, so, and I'm sorry, I'm going to loop two colors here. Okay, so, all of the things that denote past action all go together. So the imperfect, the pluperfect, and the perfect are all the historical sequence. which leaves our other three tenses as, I'm sorry for all the different colors here, but we'll try to work around that. And these three tenses, the present, the future, and the future perfect, all go together to form the primary. And for those of you who are nitpicky out there, sometimes the perfect can also be one of the primary tenses, but shh, we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay. Now, these all, when they're hooked up together, they go through um, some sort of a conjunction. A conjunction like, say, oot or ne. And what happens is that when you're in the primary sequence, you have like, um, I am going to the store, except of course we do it in Latin, so in makellum eo. Okay, so I'm going to the store and I'm in my primary sequence so that um, I can buy milk. Okay, so in makellum eo, ut lac emara possim, and I want to stay in the present tense on the other side of the ut or the ne. And again, the same is going to be true over here in the historical sequence. So if you're down in the historical sequence, you come up to your conjunction and you come out on the other side. So very handily, we have three that form the first half of the historical, and then we have the imperfect and pluperfect that form the second half. And again, the primary tenses, present, future, and future perfect on one side, then you go through the conjunction, and then you come out with either present or perfect. And that's a rough and ready explanation of the sequence of tenses in Latin. Um, there's more details to it, but rough and ready. On the one side, you start with your primary or historical tenses, which are the L-shaped boxes, and you go through your conjunction of the ut or the ne, and you come out on the other side in subjunctive, which are in the oval. So blue L-shape goes to blue oval, and green L-shape goes to green oval. And hopefully that's a basic explanation.